a very subtle way in which algebra arises, occurs in the study of constraint satisfaction problems. If you get satisfaction from constraints, this is going to be for you. What is it? It's a very broad class of problems. Um, it essentially corresponds to computational problems where we have to assign values to something according to some constraints. It sounds very general, and that's because it is. So let's give an example. Uh, Timetabling. So if we have a university uh, where we deliver various subjects, and the students are enrolled in various combinations of those subjects. And then we have to schedule an exam. So we have various exam slots. Maybe we're going to schedule the exams over one week. So what do we ask to do here? We're asked to assign the subjects to the exam slots, subject to the constraint that no single student has to sit an exam in two different subjects at the same time, a reasonable constraint. So where does the algebra arise? Well. In fact, it arises in a very subtle way. It turns out this problem here is a computationally difficult problem. No one actually has a genuinely fast algorithm for solving this kind of problem. And at the moment, people are still a little bit unclear as to exactly what makes some of these constraint satisfaction problems hard, computationally hard, and some of them easy. Now, the algebra arises in that we can associate problems of this general kind um, with some weird algebraic structure. Now this is a truly exotic creature that we associate with it. Um, it's a very strange thing. We don't even know in advance what it is. But using tools of abstract algebra, not the algebra of numbers, more like the algebra of constraints, in fact, um, we're able to use these algebraic properties to try and give us some information about why problems are hard and why they're easy.